Next lecture is on operational amplifier applications. Students should be reading section 5.7 from the textbook and the objective is to be able to solve operational amplifier problems. Signals can be either analog or digital, which is the same as continuous versus discrete signals. Signals can also be represented in the time domain or the frequency domain. Signal conditioning refers to operations performed on signals to convert them to a form suitable for interfacing with other elements. For example, in process control, a sensor or transducer measures a variable of interest such as strain, pressure, position, flow, and converts the information to an electrical signal. Here is a diagram that represents signal conditioning or filtering or some way of taking a physical quantity, measuring that quantity with a sensor or transducer, sending it through a conditioner, and then making it suitable for the output, which may then interface to some other element. Electronic measurement systems typically display readings on an instrument panel, which is referred to as instrumentation. The physical quantities may be fluid, temperature, pressure, viscosity, torque, strain, linear, or rotational velocity. The sensor or traducer produces an electric signal from this physical quantity. Examples of sensors include strain gauges, thermocouples, tachometers, infrared sen sensors, sonar, etc. Examples of signal conditioning circuits are a voltage divider and Wheatstone bridge, which convert a change in resistance to a voltage. The signal conditioning may be attenuation, amplification, linearization, filtering, buffering, or impedance matching. Passive and active filters attenuate frequencies within a certain band to condition signals. In addition, operational amplifiers can be used to create not only active filters, but voltage to current converters, analog to digital converters, integrators, differentiators, and difference amplifiers. Sometimes the system controlled by the voltage divider circuit may have a load that causes current to leak from the voltage divider circuit. This may happen if the input resistance to the load is not significantly larger than the output resistance of the voltage divider. The way to correct this problem is to connect the circuit to a voltage follower or a buffer, which is an operational amplifier with a gain of one. The benefit of doing this is that the op-amp has a very large input impedance and it can be modeled as infinite for an ideal operational amplifier. All right, let's look at an example. In order to control the level amplitude of a certain audio signal, such as on a volume control, you can use a voltage divider circuit with a variable resistor or potentiometer. For the following system, if the source is 8 volts and the system uses a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer, what position of the potentiometer will attenuate the signal to 3.3 volts? Assume the amplifier has an input resistance of 600 ohms. The reason that 600 ohms is important is because 600 ohms is a relatively small resistance and since we know that this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor, you don't want to directly connect the 10 kilo ohm potentiometer to the load of 600 ohms because you will have current leakage from the voltage divider circuit because you have such a large resistance that would now be in parallel with the 600 ohm amplifier resistance. So the way that we get around that is we use a voltage follower or a buffer. Remember the benefit of using this buffer is that it has a really high input impedance. So you could say that resistance approaches infinity. So now what we want to do is if the input is eight volts and we want the output to be 3.3 volts, we know that because it's just a voltage follower, that means I need V naught to be equal to 3.3 volts. So since we know the wiper on a potentiometer separates this 10 K potentiometer into two distinct resistances, let's say we call the top half of the pot R1 and the bottom half R2. What we want is R2 over R1 plus R2 times eight to be equal to 3.3 volts. Since we know that R1 plus R2 must be equal to 10 kilo ohms because it's a 10K potentiometer, R2 over 10K times eight must equal 3.3. So when we solve this for R2, we get that R2 is equal to 4.125 kilo ohms and R1 is equal to 5.875 kilo ohms. So we just have to set the potentiometer in such a way that it divides this into two resistors where the bottom one is 4.125K.
All right, let's look at another example. In order to amplify a signal, it is necessary to use an active circuit, which would include an operational amplifier. The maximum output of a certain transducer is 0.8 millivolts. If the transducer must supply an instrumentation amplifier that requires an input from 0 to 0 0.5 volts, design an amplifier to operate the system. Assume that the signal must operate at 10 kilohertz. So what we have here is a transducer with a value of 0 0.8 millivolts and a frequency that operates at 10 kilohertz. And we want to send that through our amplifier so that the output goes to an instrumentation amplifier which must have an input between 0 and 0 0.5 volts. So what you want to do is calculate the gain. So if I call the input V in and the output V out, then we want the gain V out over V in to equal 0 0.5 over 0 0.8 millivolts, which is 625. So in theory, you could use a non-inverting amplifier for this. So if I make a non-inverting amplifier, here's my VN, and it's tied to the positive terminal, and here's my input resistor tied to ground, and the feedback resistor that goes to V out. So to give this non-inverting amplifier a gain of 625, V out over V in must equal one plus RF over RI. So I could make the feedback resistor 624 kilo ohms and the input resistor one kilo ohm. In theory, this would be a design that would work. However, we're operating at 10 kilohertz here. And there is another characteristic of operational amplifiers that we haven't talked about much in class, and it's called gain bandwidth limitation. All op amps have a gain bandwidth limitation. And what that means is that as the frequency increases, the gain rolls off. So for example, let's say that we have this op amp here and it has a gain bandwidth limitation of 10,000. What that means is that if the frequency at 10,000 rolls off to 10 hertz and the maximum gain at that point is only 100, then you cannot have an input signal of 10 kilohertz and still get out a gain of 625. So the way that we get around this is we want to maximize the gain at this frequency by, instead of having one op amp with a gain of 625, you cascade amp, op amps together with a lower gain so that you don't get to this point where the gain has started to roll off at the higher frequencies. So for example, we know that 25 times 25 is equal to 625. And if we think about the sketch I've made here, a gain of 25 would be back here somewhere. So now I can have a higher input frequency because the gain is lower. So I can do this with cascaded inverting or non-inverting amplifiers. Let's do non-inverting first. So here's VN, positive, negative. Here's the input resistor and the feedback resistor. And now it goes into another op amp Here's the positive and the negative. Here's the input resistor and the feedback resistor. And I want each of these to have a gain of 25. So it means I can make both of the feedback resistors 24 kilo ohms and both of the input resistors one kilo ohm. And now I have two non-inverting amplifiers with a gain of 25 instead of 625. And it will give me VN over V out with V out over VN to have a gain of 625. I could also do it with non in, with inverting amplifiers by setting the positive terminal to ground and putting VN here into the negative terminal on the op amp. And here's a feedback resistor. Then I would cascade that into another negative terminal op amp 
where the positive is tied to ground. And here's the feedback resistor again. Here's my output V out. And now I make both of the feedback resistors 25 kilo ohms and the input resistors 1 kilo ohm. And this is because for a non inverting amplifier, the gain is negative RF over RI. It is possible to design a photodiode signal conditioning circuit with a sensitivity of 30 volts per foot candle by using an IV converter. Photodiodes are used for camera flash controls, headlight dimmers, barcode scanners, and laser printers. Assume that the photodiode outputs a small current that is proportional to the incident light intensity at a range of 30 picoamps to 30 microamps for 0.001 foot candles to 1,000 foot candles. Select resistor values for the following circuit to satisfy the design constraints. So the first thing we'll do is analyze the circuit. Here we have our photodiode and here is ID. Since ID is the current into the op amp, it's also the current through that feedback resistor. So if we write the KCL equation at the negative terminal, we see that ID is equal to zero minus VO1 over RF. So VO1 is equal to negative RF ID. And now since the second stage is an inverting amplifier, we get that VO is equal to negative R2 over R1 times VO1, or combining the two stages, we get RF times R2 over R1 equals ID. And we know we want the relationship between the input and the output to be 30 volts per foot candles. So now let's find the gain for the di photodiode. So we know that when the output of the photodiode is 30 microamps, the input is 1,000 foot candles, which means you get 30 nanoamps per foot candle. And since we want the overall gain to be 30 volts per foot candle, we have to design for values for RF, R2, and R1 in order to meet the specification. This means that RF times R2 over R1 must be equal to 1 times 10 to the 9th, or 1 gig, because 1 times 10 to the 9th times 30 nano will give you 30 volts per foot candle. So let's say we let RF equal one mega ohm. If we let RF equal one mega ohm, that means the gain for R2 over R1, R2 over R1 is equal to 10K. And if we once again let R2 equal to one mega ohm, then R1 is equal to one kilo ohm. And this concludes our design of a photodiode signal conditioning circuit. A digital to analog converter transforms digital signals to analog signals. The 4-bit digital to analog converter is a binary weighted ladder. The bits are weights according to the magnitude of the place value with descending values of RF over R, so that each lesser bit has half of the weight of the next higher value. VI is the most significant bit, and V4 is the least significant bit. The input voltages can only take on two values, zero or one volt. For the following circuit, let RF equal 10 kilo ohms, R1 equal 10 kilo ohms, R2 equal 20 kilo ohms, R3 equal 40 kilo ohms, and R4 equal 80 kilo ohms. Obtain the analog output for the following digital inputs, 0000, 1010, 0101, 1110, and 1111. First thing you notice, should notice is that this op amp is really just a summing amplifier. So V naught is equal to negative RF over R1 V1 minus RF over R2 V2 minus RF over R3 V3 minus RF 
over R4, V4. So now if we substitute in our resistor values, we get that V0 is equal to negative V1 minus 1 half V2 minus 1 fourth V3 minus 1 eighth V4. And remember, the most significant bit is V1, so our inputs are V1, V2, V3, V4. So if we have an input of 0, 0, 0, 0, V0 is equal to 0 volts. If we have an input of 0, 1, 0, 1, V0 is equal to negative 1.25 volts. If we have an input of 0, 1, 0, 1, V0 is equal to negative 0 0.625 volts. And if we have an input of 1110, V0 is equal to negative 1.75 volts. And finally, if we have an input of 1111, V0 is equal to negative 1.875 volts. And this concludes our lecture on operational amplifier applications.